You can make the tips in this video work for you in two different ways. The first is if you are actually moving and you want to minimize the amount of stuff that you are bringing with you. But the second is that maybe you just want a really big tidy of your home. So you are pretending as if you are moving so that you can get massive decluttering results. Either way, all the advice you need is inside. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and I have done two moves in the past four years. The first was a transatlantic move, so I know all about minimizing the amount of stuff that you want to bring with you. We really went hardcore on the decluttering before our move and it just made things so much easier, so much quicker, not just in the packing up process, but on the other end with the unpacking. Same with this home, the less you have, the less you have to lug with you. So I want to give you some really excellent questions that you can ask ask yourself that is really going to make it clear to you what you should bring with you and what you should leave behind. There is also going to be a free printable in the resources library that is exclusive for email subscribers. So if you're already on the email list, that is there waiting for you. If you are not, details are in the description for how you can sign up. It's got loads of decluttering questions you can ask yourself. It's got a packing list, an inventory. It's got labels that you can print off and stick to your boxes. Loads of stuff that is just going to make the whole process of moving that much smoother. But first I want to give you some general advice that is really going to add some context to the questions that I'll be discussing a little bit later on. Because as we will see there is no point asking the right question of the wrong item. You'll see what I mean. So the first thing I will say is that you should start as soon as you know that you are going to be moving. Start as early in the process as you can because the reality is that while it may seem like you have a lot of time and there's weeks and weeks to go, that will pass very quickly and in the run up to your move things are going to be a lot more hectic and frantic. So the earlier you can start this process, the better. You do not want to have to pack things that you don't need. That is a complete waste of time. The other reason you should start early is that maybe there are some things that you want to try and sell. So that gives you some time to, you know, take your pictures and list it and give your potential customers time to see your listing and then come and collect the stuff. Or you may want to donate some things again as you come closer to the move your time your free available time is going to be less and less so getting all of that stuff out of your home early on in the process is going to be a huge boost. The longer you leave that stuff the more chance there is that time will just get away from you and you will end up dumping all of that stuff in a box and bringing it with you because you just ran out of time. And in the meantime you're going to be tripping over all of that stuff as you're packing it just makes the whole process a lot longer and more stressful than it needs to be. So start your decluttering process early and then remove the stuff from your home as you go. Don't just create piles in a corner. That way it's out of your way, out of your hair. And like I said, you won't get to like the home stretch and you end up just chucking all of that stuff in a box and bringing it with you. That is a huge waste of time and energy in a process that is already stressful and exhausting as it is. Now, when it comes to the actual decluttering process, Probably the best advice I can give you is to start with the bulkier stuff and work your way down because there is no point spending hours and hours going through paperwork or tiny little knickknacks or something like that when that's not the stuff that is going to make the biggest dent. Instead you want to focus on the bigger things so maybe that bookcase has seen better days or it's time to chuck that chair. Really focus on the things with the biggest footprint and the things that are going to have the biggest impact. Getting rid of one item of furniture is going to be much better than spending hours maybe even days going through a box of old photographs or something. Yes you may still want to declutter or all of that small stuff but start with the bigger things that is where you're going to get the biggest impact that is where you're going to get the biggest return on your time and energy investment. Something that follows on from that but is still a really important point I feel to make is that you shouldn't sweat the small stuff. When we made our transatlantic move, I spent so much time decluttering small things on a bookcase, one of those IKEA cube units, when the reality was we were bringing that unit with us. We just wrapped up the whole thing. So it was pointless of me to spend those hours decluttering the things that were on it when we were bringing the whole thing with us. So again, it goes to that 
idea that you should focus on the things that are actually going to make a dent. We were bringing that bookcase anyway, so decluttering things on it wasn't where I was going to see the biggest impact. The whole bookcase was coming with us anyway, so it's not like I was saving us any extra space by getting rid of a few things that were on it. But another thing in the whole kind of don't sweat the small stuff is don't feel that you have to declutter everything perfectly. The reality is you will declutter some things before you move and you will declutter more things after you move. You do not have to have everything perfectly pared back before your move. And once you realize that, once you realize that you don't have to get it all right the first time around, then you can relax a little bit. Like I said, focus on the things that are going to have the biggest impact and leave the rest for later or for when you have the time. Moving is stressful. It is time consuming, it is energy sapping. Go for the big results first, but don't push yourself and force yourself to get those tiny little wins right now if it's just going to stress you out more than necessary. It doesn't have to be perfect, you just want to pack a little bit less. With that in mind, let's look at the questions that you can ask yourself that are going to get you big decluttering results so that you don't have to move with a whole bunch of junk that you don't want or need. I have five great ones that are going to take a lot of the guesswork out of it for you and just make the whole process that much simpler. The first is, have you used this item since the last time you moved? How long has that thing been sitting unused or unwanted or unloved in your home? And this is particularly true for things, you know, boxes that came with you during your last move that moved into your current home that you never unpacked. Do not bring boxes with you to your new home that you did not unpack in your current home. But even apart from that, I'm sure there are plenty of books, utensils, gadgets, maybe even some furniture that you did not use in your current home and that you don't want to bring with you and just to clutter up your new home. So if you haven't used it since you moved into your current home or if you haven't used it in a long time, you can let that stuff go. Next, and this one really helped me when we were moving, but that is, do I love and cherish and treasure this item enough to pack it all up nice and neatly, put it in a box, transport it to the new home, unpack it, find a new home for it, find a new place in that home, and then look after it for the rest of my days. Is this thing really worth it? Or if you are paying someone else to do it, which if you have the budget for it, I would highly recommend, but is this thing worth your time, your energy, potentially your money uh, to pack it all up and bring it somewhere new? Even if you're not hiring a company, there are still a lot of associated costs with moving. Maybe you have to hire a rental van, maybe you have to buy some boxes and totes and stuff. And that's apart from the massive amount of money you are probably paying for your new home. Even if it's a rental, you probably have a deposit, maybe a first month's rent to pay. Is that item worth it? Is it going to add value to your new home? Is it going to make your home feel more homely, <laughs> more comfortable for you? Or is it just going to detract from that? So sure, you might like it, but do you love it enough to sink all of that time, potential money, into the item and not just for the packing process but cluttering up your new home. Is it worth that much to you? Is it that valuable to you? In a follow-up to that then, if you are paying, and like I said there are lots of costs associated with moving, are you willing to pay to either have this item shipped or buy insurance for it. Very often, you know, if you are having a company ship your stuff, you will have to do out an inventory of all your stuff so that you can insure it, but maybe you are just insuring it anyway in between the moves and when it comes to your new house, maybe you have insurance on the contents of your new home. Again, are you willing to make that investment in an item? We don't often think of things in terms of that. Like if you see something sitting on a shelf, you don't think of it in terms of the amount of money that it's actually costing you. But when you factor in things like insurance, then maybe that will take the shine off that item 
just a little bit. And not only the insurance, but when we moved to Transatlantic, one of the most frustrating parts of the whole experience for me was actually having to itemize everything for the insurance. I had to go through all of the stuff I owned and write it all down. Again, that's another great reason to start your decluttering early on in the process so that the bulk of it is gone before you get to that point where you have to actually itemize your stuff. And you know, realistically, you don't have to be moving in order to itemize your things. Again, like I said, if you just have general home contents insurance, it's probably a good idea to have an itemized list of everything, maybe not every single thing, but the important things that you own. So is this item something that is worth itemizing and paying insurance for? Now, if you're like me already at this point, you're like, yeah, I don't love half of this stuff enough to put myself through that hassle. And it really is, moving is a hassle, but these next two questions will really help to hammer your decision home. Does this item or this collection of items fit with the feeling and the vibe that you are going for in your new home. You know, when you move, it is a fresh start. It's a clean slate. You do not want to be bringing clutter and junk into that lovely clean slate. Does it fit in with the lifestyle that you want to create in this new space? Or is it just a relic from the past? And yes, you know, things from your past, they're not all bad, of course, but the question is like, is something from your past valuable enough to bring into your future? Moving home is a chance to start over, to start fresh, it's kind of like a new year. You get to hit the reset button on stuff and it's just the perfect opportunity to think about that lifestyle and the life that you're trying to create for yourself and whether all of the stuff that you currently own fits in with that. Does this stuff belong to your future? Does it have a place in your future or would it be better left in the past? And then this next one was also incredibly helpful for me. It helped me to separate the things that were truly important from the stuff that, you know what, I could actually let go. And that is, if this item got lost or broken or damaged in some way in transit between the two homes, how devastated would you really be? Now look, yes, you'd probably up, be upset, you might be a little bit sad, but would you be genuinely gutted if you lost this item or, you know, if it was broken beyond repair? But even think about, you know, if it got damaged in a way that you could potentially repair it, it would just take maybe a lot of time and energy and effort, maybe even a lot of money. Are you willing to put in that effort to salvage the item? So if it was completely lost to you, like it got smashed, broken, waterlogged, or just went missing <laughs> somewhere along the way, or it was incredibly badly damaged to the point where it was going to need a lot of work to restore it, would you be truly good at and would you put in the time and energy required to try and save that item? I knew for me that there were so many things that yes, I would have been sad if I'd lost, but in the grand scheme of things, if this kind of, you know, went walkies and I never saw it again, would I move on with my life? The answer is yes. But some things obviously will sting a lot more than others and just asking yourself that question will help you see what is worth saving, what is worth bringing with you and what is something that if something did happen to it, you would be prepared, maybe not, you know, thrilled, but prepared to let it go. Now, when it comes to general moving tips, because there are so many things that I am very glad that I did or learned a very hard lesson. But for general moving tips, I do have another video, so I'm gonna link that for you. Go check it out. After the whole decluttering process, this is the thing that's going to make the whole process so much smoother and less stressful. And remember that email subscribers get that free printable. That's another thing that's gonna be so incredibly helpful for you. You can just check things off your list as you go. All the details are in the description box. And until next time, grab me la magwev. Agus fekimei shifti Slon, happy moving, or pretend moving, <laughs> that's what you're doing.